my name is Chris, and I'm going to talk about Wyvern Protocol and some future radical use cases for decentralized exchanges and non-fungible tokens. Theoretically. Why decentralized exchange? I think the advantages of decentralized exchange compared to centralized exchanges can be placed in roughly three categories. The first is in decentralized security. Decentralized exchanges push security to the edge. Users retain the keys. There's no central server which stores everyone's authentication data and is a, a single point of failure for hackers or for government or for uh, corporate leverage. The second is permissionless interoperability. Decentralized exchanges can be integrated with by anyone without asking. They don't have the same kind of bottleneck of corporate trust relationships which are required when a company like Coinbase, when a company like uh, you know, existing Wall Street uh, financial services providers want to integrate with a new system. Anyone can just start using protocols like ZeroX or like Rivern without asking. But the third, and the one in which I'm going to focus on in this talk, is contractual precision. Existing exchanges are limited in their ability to represent bespoke and complex assets, contracts, and orders in ways I think decentralized exchanges will not be. Next slide. What do I mean by contractual precision? Think about meet space assets. Meet space means the world as it is, including the existing uh, financial sector. Meet space assets and meet space orders are objects. They are sets of properties which describe some asset, maybe describe the color of a crypto kitty's eyes or describe the ticker for a stock or describe the, the voting rights associated with a class A or class B share of Google. And so are meet space orders. You can place a limit order to buy an asset at a particular price or a, a uh, uh, say, a descending price uh, Dutch auction. Decentralized exchanges can certainly mirror this, but they can do something else. Instead of representing orders uh, as objects, they can represent them as state predicates, as functions over whatever your counterparty might do. Next slide. And in fact, this is what Wyvern does. Wyvern is a open source, permissionless, and so far chronically undermarketed Ethereum decentralized exchange protocol. You might have heard of it, and in fact, you have used it if you bought your tickets through OpenSea. Currently, Wyvern has about $100,000, on the order of $100,000 US uh, weekly volume, mostly through OpenSea. And Wyvern enables protocol users to, instead of trading assets, instead of creating orders which specify an amount, a token identifier, and maybe whether it's a limit or market order, to trade transactions, to construct orders which specify some function over what your counterparty does and can return true or false based on whether or not you want to accept that order. Next slide. Today, Wyvern powers OpenSea. OpenSea using Wyvern features bundles, features auctions, features bids and offers. But in the future, decentralized exchange protocols, maybe Wyvern or maybe successors thereof, can get up to much more interesting things. Next slide. What might they do tomorrow? I think smart contract exchange will emerge. Many of these uh, smart contracts, many of the smart contracts associated with non-fungible games, associated the smart contract associated with CryptoKitties, for example, are themselves valuable assets. They collect some amount of revenue in conjunction often with off-chain assets such as websites, such as image directories, such as integrations. But the smart contracts themselves, through decentralized exchange protocols, will be able to be bought and sold, bid on, and offered for. Non-fungible tokens will be able to be bought and sold by property. Using Wyvern, you can construct an order which pays some amount for an NFT in, say, DAI, based on what that uh, crypto party, your counterparty is sending to you, uh, what the properties of that crypto kitty are. Maybe you're willing to pay more for blue eyes or less for red eyes, or maybe even you're willing to pay a function, a price as a function of the specific DNA of uh, the crypto kitty which your counterparty is selling for you. You can construct a single order which will exploit the programmability of the underlying ledger of the EVM in the case of Wyvern and CryptoKitties, to calculate what kind of uh, token you will accept instead of, specify, instead of needing to specify that token as a set of properties in the order itself. Parameterized lending is another use case which I think will emerge. Parameterized lending is the ability to 
lend out or, or sell usage without selling ownership, sell the ability to breed a CryptoKitty without selling the CryptoKitty itself, sell the ability to, to vote with a share of stock or a share in a DAO without selling the asset, the underlying asset itself, or to, to lend that ability for limited time periods, for limited use cases, uh, any way you can imagine. Next slide. What will be the use cases for decentralized exchanges in the next decade? Here again, I list three categories. The first is radical markets. A common ownership self-assessed tax is a proposal by economist Glenn Weil, whereby people who own finite resources, such as buildings, such as uh, space in the radio spectrum, such as perhaps domains, even Ethereum ENS domains, uh, are required to pay some tax to a common goods pool based on a self-assessed value but they are incentivized to self-assess the value correctly because anyone who offers to pay their value will be able to acquire the asset. Using a decentralized exchange protocol, such as perhaps Wyvern or successive thereof, you can implement these kinds of pools of contingent uh, requirements to, to, to sell the asset at a particular price uh, in uh, conjunction with wh wherever the tax uh, revenues are going to some sort of common goods pool, perhaps on a blockchain. Another use case in the radical markets category is the exchange of present and future data. I also happen to read The Age of Surveillance Capitalism, uh, finish it on the plane flight to New York, and I would also recommend the book. It seems that we are going to, as a society, need to come up with much better ways to preserve the advantages of big data, to preserve the compute and the societal optimization and the sort of incentive tweaking possible while ensuring that the ends are ones which we all are in favor of, not which are uh, you know, the choices of some investors in Southern California. And one way perhaps to do this is to construct decentralized exchanges in, where we can, in which we can sell present and future data, the access to data streams. Uh, one protocol starting to develop in this direction is, is Numerize Erasure. Next slide. Another use case in the next decade uh, is future contingent payments. Think about buying medicine. When you buy medicine, what are you trying to buy? I think you're trying to buy a difference, an expected difference in the future probability distribution of your health. That's what you want. If you buy a pill, you're expecting it to change what you expect your health to be in the future. Right now, there's no way to do this. So we have to rely on a, a melange of intermediary institutions uh, which through human governance and through a, a set of processes, often which are fallible and uh, incentive misaligned, try to ensure this. But instead, we could pay for this directly. We could have a prediction market, two prediction markets when you buy a particular pill. The first prediction market being whatever your future health distribution is contingent on you taking that pill. And the second prediction market being your future health distribution contingent on you not taking that pill. Then the difference between those two prediction markets is, say, the expected value uh, by those markets of this pill. To implement this at scale, we really need decentralized automated exchange. Of course, uh, to be clear, those prediction markets then will settle in the future. So if you take this pill and, in fact, uh, have the, the predicted health outcome, whoever predicted that on the prediction market makes money. Uh, if you don't have the predicted health outcome, uh, they lose money. So other parties are betting on the effect of this uh, medicine or similarly the effect of some particular unit of education uh, on a granularized uh, specification of your future health or future income potential, future ability to read complex Latin text, whatever you want. Next slide. The third use case is threshold commitment. There is a concept in evolutionary game theory known as a Malthusian trap, wherein in any evolutionary process where uh, uh, agents are selected for their reproductive capacity, uh, every property that it does not directly contribute to reductive, uh, reproductive capacity will be selected out in favors of properties which do. You can see this in human population dynamics. In fact, we're in the first several hundred period in the history of humanity where most people have far, far, far more wealth than substance. Most of human history had everyone at substance level. To solve this, you need the ability to coordinate. We see the same kind of problem with carbon taxation. Any company which uh, adopts a carbon tax voluntarily will lose out in the marketplace to other companies which do not unless they can somehow collectively enforce uh, that they all obey this carbon tax or none of them do. One way to do, do this using a decentralized exchange would be a kind of threshold commitment, constructing orders which uh, 
only commit you to do something, say pay a carbon tax, switch to a different platform, switch from Facebook to some other social platform, or fund a public good, if everyone else commits to the same. Next slide. How do we get there, uh, very briefly? Uh, one, order book decentralization. We need the ability to take the orders on DEXs, which are currently stored on servers uh, and are a single point of failure in that sense, and spread them across a peer-to-peer -peer network, handling the economics appropriately. Two, user agent automation. We need the ability for people to specify their own utility functions as a function of the state of a ledger and to sort of compile that down into a set of exchange orders, decentralized exchange orders, which will serve to implement uh, policies which, which further uh, their utility. And three, oracle mechanism design. We need to get data about the real world onto the uh, economic games via commit reveal, via uh, cleverly constructed mechanisms onto ledgers in ways that makes faking that data or censoring that data high economic cost. And then we can build these kind of prediction market protocols, these kinds of ways of translating what we value in the real world to some statement on a ledger, and then that statement on a ledger we can incentivize any way we want. Do I have time to take any questions? No. no. Thank you so much. If you want to learn more, head over to wyvernprotocol.com or find me afterwards. Thank you.